We've all seen the bleeding wheel effect used by fallout remover manufacturers to show the product working. But is that really the most effective way to use the product? Hold your nose, because that's what we're going to test on today's episode. If you're interested in detailing, maintaining and keeping your car looking its best, don't forget to click subscribe and the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. We're often shown the image of a wheel bleeding in either red or purple to show the reaction between a fallout remover and a dirty wheel, even sometimes where the wheel is then blasted clean with a pressure washer. But in the real world, is this the best way to use the product? We're going to test it out and at the end of the video, see if there's a better way to use it. I've read and heard people saying that they've used a fallout remover and it hasn't cleaned their wheels. Well, that could be because a fallout remover isn't really a wheel cleaner per se. And there is a more effective way to use it than spraying a dirty wheel and expecting it to clean the wheel. I think we need to do an experiment. Here we have a dirty wheel on my Cayenne. To set the scene, the car has been washed, the wheel hasn't, but it has been pressure washed to remove the surface dirt and dust. The first thing I'll do is spray the wheel liberally with a fallout remover. If you've never used a fallout remover and you wonder why they have such strange names, get some and experience the aroma. You'll soon understand. As a side note, the Troll's Breath being used in this video is an amazing fallout remover, and this video is applicable to using all fallout removers. We leave the fallout remover to dwell for 5-10 to 10 minutes to let the reaction happen. And now we get the bleeding effect, as seen in many adverts for this type of product, if not on a slightly lesser scale. So now we've let it sit for 5-10 to 10 minutes, we need to wash the fallout remover off, and we should be left with a clean, iron-free wheel, shouldn't we? Well, obviously the wheel is still dirty. It will be, as the fallout removers don't contain any cleaners. They only contain the chemical required to create the reaction with the iron, and maybe a thickening agent to create a gel. We could have agitated the fallout remover to give somewhat of a cleaning effect, but since it contains no form of soap, there's no form of lubrication, which could lead to scratching of the wheel surface, and that's just not something I'd like to try. So now we know that the fallout remover doesn't clean the wheel, but surely it's removed the iron particles from the wheel, hasn't it? Well, next I'm going to clean the wheel thoroughly and give it a quick dry. Now I'm going to spray the wheel once again with the fallout remover to see if there are any remaining iron particles. Again, I'll let it sit for 5-10 to 10 minutes. And look, we're getting virtually the same amount of purple bleeding that I got from the wheel on my video showing how to clean and decontaminate alloy wheels, and in that video I didn't use the fallout remover first, I simply cleaned, then dried, and then used a fallout remover on the wheel. In conclusion to the experiment, a bleeding wheel may look good, but it's only removing the surface dust, which would have been washed off with your wheel cleaner anyway. If you're using a fallout remover in this way, you may not be getting the best out of the product, as you could potentially not be removing the iron particles that you set out to remove. By reacting with the surface brake dust, it's not allowing the fallout remover to react with the iron particles that are embedded in the wheel's paint. The best use of a fallout remover is to clean the wheel first, and then use the fallout remover to do its job properly and effectively on the bonded iron particles. If you think of it like using polish, you wouldn't polish a dirty car. Everything has its use and it has its place in the detailing chain. Fallout removers are great at what they do, but they are better when used properly. I would recommend that you should only use a fallout remover every 6-9 to nine months on a daily driven car, and even less than that on a car that doesn't see much use. Fallout removers in some situations can cause premature corrosion on parts if overused, and like everything in detailing, should only be used when needed. I do hope you found this video and the information contained in it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and if you've got any tips that you want to share, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.